Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss one very important topic in the central nervous system, which is called as the muscle spindle. Okay, students find uh, to understand students find it difficult to understand the concept behind the muscle spindle. So I have made it very easy in this class. So listen to the complete class so as to get the grip over the concepts of the muscle spindle. And for those people who have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Okay, so let's study the muscle spindle in the following subheadings. Let's see where the muscle spindle is located. Let's understand its structure. Yeah, innovation. Innovation means both afferent as well as apparent nerves. And the muscle spindle is involved in one very important reflex which is called as stretch reflex, also called as a monosynaptic reflex. Let's study the different types of stretch reflexes and very very important to understand is the role of the gamma motor neurons and what is called as the alpha gamma coactivation. Okay, so stay with me for the entire length of the video in order to understand all these concepts. Okay, so let's uh, know the location. Where is it located? Of course, it is located inside the muscle. So this is where is the location. So uh, as you are seeing, if I am parting away the fibers of the muscle, inside I am seeing these fibers. Okay, these fibers are running parallel to the fibers of the muscle. Okay, these fibers are called as intrafusal fibers. Okay, these are the fibers of the muscle spindle. These are called as the intrafusal fibers. In order to differentiate them from the fibers of the muscle actually which is causing contraction and these are what are called as the extrafusal fibers. Intrafusal fibers because the muscle spindle is located inside the muscle and the fibers of the muscle spindle are called as the intrafusal fibers and then we have the muscle which is located outside the fibers of the muscle the original contractile portion of the muscle which are referred to as the extrafusal muscle fibers okay and this muscle spindle is an encapsulated spindle shaped organ which is located inside the muscle okay let's understand the structure and also the innervation of the muscle spindle Basically, now I told you regarding the intrafusal muscle fibers, isn't it? There are two types of intrafusal muscle fibers. One is called as nuclear back fiber. Another one is called as nuclear chain fiber. So, what is this nuclear back fiber? The nuclear back fiber and the chain fiber, I am differentiating it on the basis of the structure. So, here you can see, when I say the back fiber, here you can see this structure. The central part of this fiber is very much dilated. Okay, this dilated part is the one which is referred to as bag and within this central dilated part you can see there are so many nuclei, okay, group or congregation of nuclei is there. In contrast to this structure, if I see this structure, there is no such dilatation of the central part. The central part and the peripheral part are almost the same, like they are slender chain like structures and here you can see the nuclei are arranged in a single row. They are not having, they are not arranged in group, they are just arranged in a single row. So this fiber is what is called as a nuclear chain fiber and this fiber with the central part dilated and within the dilated part there is congregation of the nuclei. This is what is called as the nuclear back fiber. Now the nuclear back fiber is further subdivided into two types depending upon the function. This is one is called as a dynamic nuclear back fiber another one is called as a static nuclear back fibers. That means in totality there are three types of intrafusal fibers. Dynamic nuclear back fiber, static nuclear back fiber and the nuclear chain fiber. One more important thing that I would like to tell to you is that this entire intrafusal fiber can be divided into two portions. One is the central portion another one is the peripheral portion so this portion what you are seeing here this is the central portion okay and this central portion is the actual sensory part whereas the peripheral portion is the motor part central portion is sensory the peripheral portion is motor so if i say the central portion is sensory what does it sense it is going to sense the stretch of the muscle or the change in the length of the muscle. So, if it is going to sense that, it also needs a sensory innervation. And the sensory innervation to the central part of the intrafusal fibers is coming from two nerve fibers. One is called as 1A fiber, another one is called as 2 fiber. The 1A fibers are also referred to as 
primary sensory endings and the two fibers are also referred to as secondary sensory endings. Now, these 1A fibers, as here we can see in the diagram, they are innervating the dynamic nuclear back fibers, they are innervating the static nuclear back fibers, they are also innervating the nuclear chain fibers. Okay, so that means 1A fibers are carrying the information from all the three intrafusal muscle fibers, dynamic nuclear back fibers, static nuclear back fibers as well as the nuclear chain fibers and how these 1A fibers are ending on this central part, here you can see that these fibers are spiraling on that central sensory portion. So such a kind of ending is what is called as annulo spiral ending okay that is what is called as the annulo spiral ending now let's shift our focus to type 2 fibers and here we can see the type 2 fibers are not innervating dynamic nuclear back fibers so very important point the type 2 fibers here you can see that they are innervating only the static nuclear back fiber as well as the nuclear chain fiber and the way they end on the static nuclear back fiber and the static chain fiber is what is called as flower spray ending. It is what is called as flower spray ending. So this is regarding the sensory innervation of the intrafusal fibers. Now we also have the motor innervation and the motor innervation is to the peripheral part because the peripheral part is a contractile part. Remember that peripheral part is a contractile part whenever the peripheral part is contracting that is it is becoming shorter it is stretching the central part remember this very important point and which is the nerve which is innervating the peripheral part very important nerve that is the gamma motor neuron and remember that the gamma motor neuron is going to innervate all the three the dynamic nuclear back fibers the static nuclear back fibers as well as the nuclear chain fiber okay i hope the structure location and innovation is crystal clear next let's see the stretch reflex now as i have told you the central so th so these are the extra fusel fibers these are the intra fusel fibers okay these intra fusel fibers are having this central part and this central part is sensory Okay, the central part is sensory. Fine. So, what is it this, what is it that these intrafusal fibers are sensing? They are sensing one very important thing which is called as stretch of the muscle. Okay, stretch of the muscle. So, whenever the muscle is stretching, what is going to happen? There is a change in the length of the muscle. There is a change in the length of the muscle fibers. So, whenever I am stretching the muscle, what I am doing, I am actually stretching the extra fusel fibers. So, when I stretch the extra fusel fibers, there is also stretching of the intrafusal fibers. So, this stretch of the intrafusal fibers is what is detected by the central portion of the intrafusal fibers, which is the sensory portion. So, once there is a detection of the stretch, there is a distortion of the central portion. The central portion begins to generate what is called as receptor potentials. Now, these receptor potentials get converted into action potentials and these action potentials are going to travel along the afferent nerves. Okay, so there is activation of the sensory neuron or the afferent neurons. Which were the sensory neurons? These were two, group 1 and group 2A. One is called as the primary, 2A is called as the secondary sensory neuron. Okay, so whenever there is activation of this sensory neuron or the afferent neuron, this sensory neuron is going to enter into the spinal cord via the dorsal root. Okay, so once it enters into the dorsal gray horn of the spinal cord, from there it enters into the ventral gray horn of the spinal cord and in the ventral gray horn of the spinal cord, it is synapsing with a efferent neuron. What is this efferent neuron? This efferent neuron is nothing but our alpha motor neuron. Okay, it is our alpha motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron is in turn supplying the extrafusal muscle fibers. 
okay so whenever there is activation of the afferent neuron coming out from the muscle spindle this afferent neuron is going to stimulate the alpha motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron which is innervating the extra fusal muscle fibers or i can just say the muscle is going to cause what it is going to cause contraction of the muscle this is what is the stretch reflex so the stimulus for the stretch reflex is stretch the receptor is the muscle spindle afferent nerves are one and two a group of neurons where is the center the center is located at the level of the spinal cord which is the efferent efferent is the alpha motor neuron what is the effector the effector here is the muscle what is the effect the effect is contraction of the muscle okay so this is how the stretch reflex is going to function and this stretch reflex is a reflex which is occurring wherein the synapse is a single synapse which is occurring in the spinal cord between the afferent neuron and between the alpha motor neuron that's why stretch reflex is a very good example of what is called as monosynaptic reflex it's a very good example of monosynaptic reflex and if you have performed your deep tendon reflexes in your clinical physiology lab or in your hospitals or in the clinics all the deep tendon reflexes are very good example of stretch reflex so let me give you an example of the knee jerk what we do with the knee jerk with the knee hammer i am going to strike over the patellar tendon so when i strike over the patellar tendon what i am doing is i am in turn causing stretching of a muscle which muscle that is quadriceps femoris muscle so once the quadriceps femoris muscle is stretched the afferent the muscle spindle here is stimulated and the afferent impulses from the muscle spindle are going to enter into the spinal cord okay from the spinal cord the afferent impulses in the form of alpha motor neuron is going to the muscle and it is causing contraction of the muscle so once there is contraction of the quadriceps femoris what i am seeing i am seeing that there is extension of the knee joint okay so remember all your deep tendon reflexes are very good example for the stretch reflex or the monosynaptic reflex so this is the main function of the muscle spindle it is involved in a reflex which is called as stretch reflex now let now let's see that there are two types of stretch reflexes one is called as a phasic or dynamic stretch reflex another one is called as a static or a tonic kind of a stretch reflex so let's understand what is the meaning of this phasic or dynamic stretch reflex here the stimulus is sudden or rapid stretch of the muscle remember here the stimulus is not a sustained stretch of the muscle i am stretching the muscle for a shorter duration of time and i am leaving it now what is going to happen when i do that there is also sudden or rapid stretch of the muscle spindle when there is a sudden or a rapid stretch of the muscle spindle there is stimulation of only one type of intrafusal fiber which is called as dynamic nuclear bag fiber so when there is stimulation of only the dynamic nuclear bag fiber there is stimulation of the 1a fibers only or the primary sensory endings so when there is stimulation of 1a fibers only now there is activation of the reflex arc this is leading to sudden and strong contraction of the muscle okay hence i am getting a immediate jerk kind of a movement that's why i call all deep tendon reflexes as jerks i call them as ankle jerk knee jerk biceps jerk so on okay so this dynamic stretch reflex is not going to last for a longer duration of time dynamic stretch reflex is going to get over within a fraction of a second there is a stretch if the stretch is maintained the dynamic is not coming into action when there is a stretch at that point of time dynamic so dynamic is sensing the change in the length of the muscle but it doesn't sense the change in the length which is taking place over a period of time that's why i am telling that it is over within a fraction of second so it is going to oppose that sudden change in the length sudden change in the length okay all our deep tendon reflexes are very good examples for phasic or dynamic stretch reflex so in contrast to this phasic or dynamic stretch reflex we have one more type of stretch reflex which is called as a static or a tonic kind of a stretch reflex now what is the difference the difference is only lying with the stimulus what is the stimulus here 
the stimulus here is sustained stretch of the muscle the muscle is stretched sustainedly at that point of time the dynamic stretch reflex is going to die off dynamic stretch reflex is not going to come into play okay so that means the muscle is kept stretched there what i am doing i have stretched the muscle for a brief duration of time see when when with the knee hammer when i am hitting over the patella and taking the knee hammer out what i am doing is i am suddenly stretching so because of that stretch this reflex is activated and again there is contraction of the muscle the muscle is brought back to its original length but here what is happening what is the stimulus is that here the muscle is kept stretched i am not just stretching and taking off my stimulus the muscle is kept stretched now when the muscle is kept stretched that point of time there is going to be stimulation of static nuclear back fiber as well as nuclear chain fiber remember this thing there is stimulation of static nuclear back fiber as well as the nuclear chain fiber now when the static nuclear back fiber and the nuclear chain fiber is stimulated there is stimulation of both 1a and 2 fibers this we know because we have already studied the structure of the muscle spindle so there is activation of both primary and secondary sensory ending so when there is stimulation of both there is contraction of the muscle going to happen as long as the muscle is stretched so the muscle is kept in stretched position as long as the muscle is stretched position continuous impulses are coming from the primary and the secondary nerve endings and these are causing continuous contraction of the muscle okay that's the most important point okay so this static or tonic stretch reflex is very much important in helping in the control of the posture so further stretch is going to cause further tonic contraction and this uh, stretch reflex this uh, static or tonic stretch reflex is also important in maintenance of the muscle tone fine so this is the difference between the phasic and the tonic stretch reflex now i'm going to tell you a very important concept till now i am just speaking about alpha motor neuron i have spoken about 1a group of neurons i have spoken about two group of neurons but in the initial uh, part of the class when i was discussing the structure of the muscle spindle i told you that there is also a motor innervation coming to the intrafusal fibers in the form of the gamma motor neurons which are going to innervate the peripheral portion of the intrafusal fibers now what is the role of these gamma motor neurons let's understand okay so in order to understand the role of the gamma motor neurons, we have to ask ourselves one question. What is that question? What is going to happen to the spindle when the muscle is contracts? Okay, let's try and understand this with the help of this beautiful diagram. So here, in the first diagram, the muscle is at rest. Okay, that means the extrafusal fibers is not stretching that's why there is also no stretching of the intrafusal fibers because there is no stretching of the intrafusal fibers the amount of impulses which are generated in the sensory nerves is very very less okay now let's say in the second instance what i do is i stretch these fibers so we all know because of the stretch of the extrafusal fibers there is also going to be stretch of the intrafusal fibers and when the central portion of the intrafusal fiber is stretched it is going to activate reflex arc so here i am seeing more number of impulses in the sensory nerves so whenever a reflex arc is activated ultimately it is causing the contraction of the muscle now in the third instance what i am seeing is there is contraction of the muscle so when there is contraction of the muscle what is happening to the muscle spindle the muscle spindle is becoming slack the word used here is slack or the muscle spindle is going to become loose okay so whenever the muscle spindle is becoming loose because of the contraction of the muscle here we can see that there is no impulses coming so that means whenever there is contraction of the muscle the muscle spindle is going to stop sending sensory information to the central nervous system okay and the central nervous system is not going to like it if it is not going to get continuous sensory information from the muscle 
So for that, what is going to happen is we know that the muscle spindle is also supplied by one neuron which is called as the gamma motor neuron. Now let's say at this point when the muscle is contracting, there is stimulation of the gamma motor neurons. So when the gamma motor neurons are going to get stimulated, what is going to happen? The gamma motor neurons is going to cause contraction of the peripheral parts of the intrafusal fibers. So when there is contraction of the peripheral part of the intrafusal fibers, what is going to happen to the central part? Now let's say this is how it is. Okay. Now this part is contracting. So if this part contracts, what happens to the central part? The central part is stretching. You are understanding my point? Now when the central part begins to stretch, again I am going to get impulses from the in the sensory nerves. You are getting my point? So that means even when the muscle is contracting, if there was no gamma motor neuron innervation, I would have not got any information regarding the position of the muscle and hence position of the joint. This is what is called as proprioception. But this is devastating to the central nervous system because the central nervous system demands that I need to get a continuous sensory information irrespective of the fact whether the muscle is contracting or the muscle is relaxing. So, how then the muscle or the muscle spindle is going to send the information without generating the impulses when the muscle is contracting? Whenever the muscle is contracting, muscle contraction is occurring because of the alpha motor neurons. But at the same time, there is also firing of the gamma motor neurons, which is causing contraction of this peripheral part of the intrafusal fibers. So, when the peripheral part of the intrafusal fibers are going to contract, they are going to stretch the central part and this is how the impulses are generated in the sensory nerves and the impulses are transmitted to the central nervous system. Okay. So what is it which is causing stimulation of the gamma motor neurons is the descending pathway. See here again this is the ventral greyhound of the spinal cord. This is your alpha motor neuron. Alpha motor neuron is supplying to the extrafusal fibers. And this is your gamma motor neuron and the gamma motor neuron is applying to the intrafusal fibers. So whenever there is a voluntary contraction, the voluntary contraction is occurring because of the stimulus coming from the descending pathways or from the higher centers. Now these descending pathways, they just don't activate the alpha motor neuron. Simultaneously, they are also going to activate the gamma motor neuron. So when the gamma motor neuron is activated simultaneously, what is going to happen? It is going to innervate the peripheral part of the intrafusal fibers, thus causing stretching of the central part and then this is going to generate the impulses. This is what is called as alpha gamma coactivation. As simple as that, alpha and gamma coactivation. Okay. So, I hope I was able to make you understand the concepts behind the functioning of the muscle spindle. Just to summarize the entire class once again, where is it located? Of course, it is located in the muscle. The structure, there are fibers which are called as intrafusal fibers which differentiate it from the extrafusal fibers of the muscle. Okay, And uh, how many are there? There are two types of fibers, nuclear back fibers and the nuclear chain fibers. Again, the nuclear back fibers, why I am calling it as back fiber, back fiber because the central part is dilated. Here, the central part is not dilated. The nuclear back fibers are again divided into dynamic and static. So, innervation, there is an afferent innervation coming from 1 and 2A group of neurons. And then there is an afferent innervation which is coming from the gamma motor neurons. And where these gamma motor neurons are present, they are also present in the spinal cord. Which part of the spinal cord? They are present in the ventral greyhound of the spinal cord and these gamma motor neurons are going to occupy about 30 percentage of the total cells which are present in the spinal cord. Majority of the cells are alpha motor neurons. Okay. Then uh, the function of this very important muscle spindle is to initiate a reflex which is called a stretch reflex. Because there is only one synapse which is occurring in the spinal cord between the afferent and the efferent nerve. Efferent nerve is the alpha motor neuron which is supplying to the extrafusal fibers. That's why this reflex is also called as a 
monosynaptic reflex. And then very important concept we have understood the types of stretch reflexes that is the dynamic stretch reflex and the importance of the static stretch reflex. Dynamic is immediate change in the length is, is what is tense. Static is sustained change in the length is what is sensed. Okay. Then we have understood very important the role of the gamma motor neurons. Okay. And what is the meaning of alpha and gamma coactivation. Okay. Hope this video was useful for you in understanding the concepts behind the muscle spindle, the stretch reflex and the alpha gamma coactivation. Okay. If it was helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching this video.